Our theme uh, comes from Psalm chapter 16, verse 11. And it says, You make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. We are uh, walking through the Bible this year, talking about what that looks like um, to be living on the path uh, that God has marked out for us. Um, we began this year by talking about how there are basically two paths uh, that we can deviate from to get off of God's path. Uh, there's the path of anxiety, which is where many of us uh, wind up at certain points throughout our lives. Um, this is a path that leads to loneliness, um, depression, uh, emptiness, uh, spiritual emptiness, and frustration, frustration with ourselves, um, and it just, it, it, we kind of deteriorate as we go down this path of anxiety. Uh, many of us can relate, and we've been there, and eventually you get to the point where you say, how did I get here? The other path is this path of ego, or pride, where people divert off of God's path and they go the other direction. And these are people who, um, they do very selfish things, um, they get entrapped and snared in sin, and eventually they get to the point of willful moral decline, where they willfully uh, get worse and worse, and they eventually oppress other people. Um, the Bible has a lot to say about oppression and people who are oppressors, and, um, and it's not very positive. So um, God desires and wills for us to be on his path, uh, to be in the protective shelter of the Lord, and to enter into his rest. Um, we are going to be going through Daniel this morning. Uh, a little bit of context for Daniel. Daniel is preaching shortly after Jeremiah. Uh, we read Jeremiah and Ezekiel and then Daniel, they're all contemporaries, so they all were living in, in about the same time period. Uh, this was after the Babylonian exile in uh, 586 B.C. Daniel is one of the exiles uh, living in Babylon, and Daniel actually got promoted uh, because he had this great gift of interpreting visions. Um, Daniel would interpret visions, and so he was promoted up through the ranks in Babylon, and he became a ruler, uh, much like Joseph was in the time of Egypt. Daniel became a ruler over Babylon, um, and he was Jewish. So Daniel, of course, we know the famous stories in Daniel. We're going to talk about a less famous uh, passage in Daniel this morning, but we all know about Daniel and the lion's den, right? Uh, we all learned that at BBS at some point. Uh, Daniel is thrown into the lion's den, and, and the, the lion is, like, licking him, and he's, you know, like, petting the pet, and then he walks out with, like, this pet lion, right? Um, just a really cool story of the faithfulness of God, of somebody who stays on God's path and enters into the protective shelter of the Lord. And then he appoints Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego uh, to certain positions, and we all know that story. Um, they won't bow down to, uh, to the gods, and so they're thrown into the fire. The fire's heated seven times past its normal uh, operating range, and it's so hot that the people fueling the fire get burned up. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego walk into the fire, and um, people can see them in there, and they're walking around, inside this, this lava, basically. And then they walk out, and they are, uh, even their hair is unsinged. And so Nebuchadnezzar bows down to the God of the heavens, and he says, this God is the real deal. That's just amazing, uh, seeing God's people live out their faith in other people um, 
they pagan people, very pagan people, powerful people, turn to the Lord because of our faithfulness. We're going to settle in on chapter 9 of Daniel. If you have your Bibles, you can pull them out. Daniel chapter 9. I'm going to back up a little bit from where Mike read this morning. He started in verse 13. I'm going to start in verse 1. The beautiful prayer of Daniel for the people of Israel. Jeremiah had prophesied that the Israelites were going to be in captivity and they were going to have all these horrible things happening for about 70 years. Daniel was living within that time period. And he's witnessing it. And he's seeing it. And the people are just horrible, having horrible things happen after horrible things. And the people are, if you remember how hard their hearts were, Ezekiel's preaching, Jeremiah's preaching, and the, and the people are, are mocking them. They're ridiculing them. Um, they're not repenting. Chapter 9 and verse 1. In the first year of Darius, the son of Asharis, by descent a Mede, who was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, perceived in the books the number of years that according to the word of the Lord to Jeremiah the prophet must pass before the end of the desolations of Jerusalem, namely, 70 years. And then I turned my face to the Lord God, seeking him by prayer and pleas for his mercy with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. I prayed to the Lord my God and made confession, saying, O Lord, the great and awesome God who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments, we have sinned. Isn't that interesting that Daniel didn't say, I sinned or they sinned? He's not pointing fingers and like, you know, God, look at these people. He's humble. He's contrite. And he includes himself in this confession. Lord, we have sinned and done wrong and acted wickedly and rebelled, turning aside from your commandments and rules. We have not listened to your servants, the prophets. Isn't that interesting? Jeremiah and Ezekiel spent their entire lives preaching to these people, and now we have Daniel coming back and saying, we didn't listen to your prophets. They spoke in your name to our kings, our princes, and our fathers, and to all the people of the land. Verse 7, to you, O Lord, belongs righteousness, but to us, open shame. By the way, I'm going to stop there in verse 7. I'm going to talk about this a little bit. We've been talking about forgiveness in the adult class, and if you guys are missing that, it is an excellent class. Um, Little, little plug for the class. We're going through the life of Christ, and it's just it's phenomenal to walk with Jesus um, through the Holy Scriptures. We've been talking about forgiveness, and, and this morning we were just talking about what's required of the person who carries the debt. The person who carries the debt, the person who sinned against other people, they have to be contrite. They have to be sincere. They have to be genuine. They can't come around telling people, you, know, you need to forgive me. They've got to be completely broken and sincere and genuine and repentant. Let's read this again, verse 7. To you, O Lord, belongs righteousness, but to us, open shame. Daniel's saying we're, we're ashamed of, of the sins that we did. We're ashamed of ourselves. We're ashamed of what we've become. We're ashamed that we mocked your prophets, that we didn't listen to them. We are ashamed that God, righteousness belongs to you, not to us. As at this day, to the men of Judah, the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and to all Israel, those who are near and those who are, are far away, in all the lands to which you have driven them because of the treachery that they have committed against you. Verse 8, to us, O Lord, belongs open shame. To our kings, to our princes, to our fathers, because we have sinned against you. Now listen to me. Listen very carefully. 
Daniel survived the lion's den because of his faithfulness. And listen to what he says in this passage. He doesn't say, God, I've been faithful. And I, you know, you rescued me from the lion's den. And I'm going to march forward from this time forth. And, and I'm going to show the people what it looks like to, to be godly and to be just. And I'm, going to, and I'm going to demonstrate to them. He doesn't say that, does he? This is a man who, through his faithfulness, was rescued out of the lion's den, who witnessed Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego thrown into this fire pit, and because of their righteousness, because of their faithfulness, were rescued out of those flames. And he's not saying, God, I'm gonna, you know, we're going to come and we're going to show these people they knew better. And He says, God, we're, we're sinners. I come to you and I confess. And I repent. God, we don't deserve righteousness. Righteousness belongs to you. Isn't that amazing? Isn't this incredible? What a prayer. What an incredible prayer. Read verse 10 again. We have not obeyed the voice of the Lord our God by walking in his laws, which he set before us by his servants, the prophets. All Israel has transgressed your law and turned aside, refusing to obey your voice. And the curse and the oath that are written in the law of Moses, the servant God, have been poured out upon us because we have sinned against him. Daniel's not surprised. He's not angry with God and like, God, why are you doing it? He, he says, God, you're doing exactly what was written in the law of Moses. You told us that if we go down this path of unrighteousness, you told us that if we turn our backs to you, you told us that if we have other idols that we established before you, you told us that if we did these things. But you would that you would punish us, and that there would be consequences. And Daniel acknowledges it in his confession. Verse 12, he has confirmed his words, which he spoke against us by our rulers who ruled us, bringing upon us a great calamity. For under the whole heaven there has not been done anything like what has been done against Jerusalem. And here's where we'll pick up. Verse 13, where Mike read for us this morning. As it is written in the law of Moses, all this calamity has come upon us. Yet we have not entreated the, the favor of the Lord our God, turning from our iniquities and gaining insight by your truth. Do you hear what he's saying? God, you punished us. You did exactly what you said you would do. And we still haven't repented. We still have our backs turned to you. We still are walking in the same direction that we were. Therefore the Lord has kept ready the calamity and has brought it upon us. For the Lord our God is righteous in all the works that he has done, and we have not obeyed his voice. And now, O Lord our God, who brought your people out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand, and have made a name for yourself, as at this day we have sinned, we have done wickedly. O Lord, according to all of your righteous acts, let your anger and your wrath turn away from our city, your city, Jerusalem, your holy hill, because for our sins and for the iniquities of our fathers, Jerusalem and your people have become a byword among all who are around us. Now, therefore, O God, listen to the prayer of your servant and his pleas for mercy. And for your own sake, O Lord, make your face shine upon your sanctuary, which is desolate. You hear what he's saying? There's repentance in this prayer. There's repentance in confession. He's not saying, God, you know, have mercy on us. Come on. You're supposed to be this merciful God. And, yeah, we're sinners, but, you know, everybody sins, and, you know, we all fall short of the glory of God. He's not saying that, is he? Daniel's taken full responsibility for his sins and for the sins of 
the Israelites living and breathing, and for the sins of Israelites who are long gone. Saying, God, we messed up big time. And this calamity that's come upon us is it's too much to bear. And so we repent. We repent, we confess. God, show us mercy. Verse 18, oh my God, incline your ear and hear. Open your eyes and see our desolations in the city that is called by your name. For we do not present our pleas before you because of our righteousness, but because of your great mercy. Isn't that incredible? We talked this morning about the guy who Jesus says he walks in, walks into the temple and he says, you know, thank you, God, that you didn't make me like those people. And then there was another guy who wouldn't even look up. He had his head down and he's beating his breast and he's saying, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. There's no room on this path that God has marked out for us. There's no room for arrogance, for pride, for ego. Um, It takes complete humility and confession. And if ever there's a right way to do it, we need to look to Daniel. We do not present our pleas before you because of our righteousness, but because of your great mercy. O Lord, hear O oh Lord, forgive. O oh Lord, pay attention and act. Delay not for your own sake, O oh my God, because your city and your people are called by your name. What a beautiful, beautiful prayer of being contrite, um, being broken, being remorseful, being repentant, and acknowledging God's full righteousness and mercy. We serve an incredible God who's fully righteous, who's fully supreme, and who is a merciful God, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Let's serve him with all of our hearts. Let's lean on him. And when we sin, let's confess to him and join each other in building each other up and loving each other back to health. If there's anybody this morning who has not yet taken that step to put Christ on a baptism or anybody who has any prayer needs, we invite you to come forward or our shepherds will be in the back. You can go, go back to them as we stand and we sing together.